Changes the air, changes the wind, changes the water, changes the blood. I wanted to freeze a piano into the ice because I wanted to hear what it would sound like for the lake, the water under the ice, to resonate and be the sounding body for the music. And we would actually hear it using an underwater microphone called a hydrophone. And that's what I wanted to hear. I thought her idea of bringing a piano out into the middle of a lake, freezing it into the lake was such a great idea. Not only engaging the area that is around her, but also to be able to get this uh, audio source from underneath the water. Other than thinking, who the heck would want to do something crazy like this? <laughs> and it was Carmen, but that's okay. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I don't think it had ever been done before, and why not? So the piano was in my friend's house. We hired a moving company to take the piano from my friend's house down the stairs into their moving truck uh, and onto the main ice road. And then we had to do a transfer at the access road uh, that went off the main ice road uh, onto um, like a flat sled uh, that was going to be pulled behind a skidoo. And so we took the piano down, laid it on its side, because otherwise it would have been too wobbly, um, strapped it onto the, uh, the sled behind the skidoo, and the sco skidoo took off down the, the access road, and we followed in trucks. Once we got the piano to the site, we shoveled out a circle. That was going to be our little, my little stage. Uh, and then the chainsaw came out. So we had to dig a hole, and by dig I mean chainsaw. We had to chainsaw a hole in the ice um, the size of the piano, so like about a bathtub size. Dig a little bit of snow off, got the saw ready to go, and got ready to cut through the ice. And then uh, after they had gotten as much as they could out with the small chainsaw, they got the big chainsaw to be able to go down uh, even farther um, and uh, to, to kind of chisel out to the depth that we needed to, for the piano strings to be embedded in the ice. Now the plan was for it to be all set in, the piano would be in, and then we would poke a hole through to the water underneath the ice and then it would bubble up gently and, uh, and freeze in. But the big chainsaw nicked the, the undersurface uh, where the water is, and so the water started to seep up. So as he was chainsawing, water was like getting flipped up with the chainsaw, going all over the legs. They were, we were, we were like the chainsaw operator was covered in ice, um, and then we ended up lifting the piano in once it got to the, the right size and the right height. Three or four of us were there, we just literally pushed it in the water. And Carmen said, yes, good, and that's what we went with. We had only had one shot at this. We weren't gonna be able to take it out to redo it, so we plopped it in, and it sploosh went in, and it was perfect. So happy. I think it was like, my, I think it was minus 40. I think it was minus 40. It was, um, yeah, it was pretty brutal. There was mustaches freezing and all this stuff. Uh, I remember sitting down once the piano had gotten in and, and had been out there for a while. I remember taking off my gloves to, to play. And uh, you know, they never tell you to like, Lick a, lick a pole, I, I put my hands on the keyboard and my fingertips were now stuck and I had to, they were stuck on the keys and I, I had to pull them off. It was so cold. Somewhere in the, uh, the high minus 30s, I think there was a bit of a wind if I wasn't mistaken too, so it was a little cold. The whole intent of this was to hear the piano in the ice and some of the strings would be, were frozen into the ice. That was. That was something that was very deliberate. I wanted to actually have the strings themselves like, connected to the ice, not just the piano on top of the ice. The piece I wrote was called Changes. I feel, I feel it, it changing, changing me. me. I feel it changing me. My body physically was going through a number of different changes because I was pregnant and I just I wanted to bring that into into the space that we were in outdoors where everything's changing all the time when we were out there everything seemed really still and frozen and solid um, you could hear the ice cracking and moving and changing 
the 360 camera and the VR headset, which is what this film would be intended for in its final state, meant that people who were watching this would be able to look all the way around um, the, 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 the site that we were on. We developed this idea and a way of being able to bring the audience to that one spot. Since I had this giant piano, I wanted to make it a bit more interesting than just somebody sitting at a piano playing it. So I designed um, multiple Carmens, multiple Mies, to, to exist and move around the, the camera and around the piano. Um, and then when they stitched everything together, um, people who were watching would be able to have a little more kind of engagement with me as a performer. But because it was a 360 video, the camera itself uh, is, is on, a, on a pole and it has cameras all around it so it can see everything. So there couldn't be any crew visible, otherwise you would see them in the 360 VR headset when you put it on and looked around. So the crew had to not be seen. So two people are actually hiding behind the piano. End of the day, the light's going down, um, the chainsaw comes back out. We drill a channel around the piano, uh, and then with these big uh, poles, these big heavy metal poles, the crew was punching holes all the way through down to the water, like, like Swiss cheese, all the way around the piano. So it was still in the ice, We didn't because we didn't want it to fall all the way through the ice. <laughs> Well, actually, I think I did kind of get in there with the ice poker and stuff like that, but like, uh, nah, I let those military safety dudes like take that. So we just punctured holes all the way around, tied a big yellow Herc strap around the piano, tied the Herc strap to uh, the large red truck, and got some tension on it so it was uh, it wouldn't fall through. And we kept poking the holes, picking the holes, and then uh, Don got back in the truck and just started to. To, to give it some pressure, and then he gave it a big one, and it went pop, but it didn't came all the way out. But it didn't fall through. Excellent, just like we planned. <laughs> then he just gave her. He just floored it, and it went zoop. <laughs> the piano came all the way out of the ice, um, landed on its back, great. And uh, the plan had been to put the piano back on the skidoo sled, skidoo it to the main road, kind of reverse the whole process. But Don just kept going. <laughs> he could pull that right to the road! <laughs> we hooked it up to the truck and pulled it out. And then just dragged it all the way until we got the ice road to where the trailer was. We didn't have a lot of time to actually play with it uh, because it was so cold and the focus was this film shoot. So um, I, don't, I didn't completely feel satisfied with the piano sounds, which just means I want to do it again. Shame.